Welcome back to the MMA Report Live right here on RadioInfluence.com. Joining us now is a man that's going to be fighting on Saturday night at Bellator 142 on the main card in a lightweight matchup. He'll be taking on Josh Thompson. It's Mike Bronzoulis, who is returning to the Bellator cage. Mike, appreciate the time. Uh, Got to ask you, after losing in the, the finale of Fight Master, did you ever think you'd be back in the Bellator cage? Uh, you know, I wasn't sure. You know, after the the fight master finale, I asked for my release, and uh, you know, I got it. You know, I had to pay my way out, but uh, I got it, and um, went on, went on and dropped weight classes, and uh, had some success with uh, Legacy. Went and captured the lightweight world title, and got the call from uh, the Hulk tour to fight in the Dynamite show against Josh Thompson, and I immediately jumped on it. You know, uh, it's a big show. And I'm extremely happy to be a part of it. So did I think I was going to be back? You know, you never know what a guy has in store for you. I didn't really put too much thought in it, but I'm very happy to be here. You know, in terms of obviously you've won three in a row here, but prior to that you did lose three in, three in a row, one of those being to Joe Riggs in the Fight Master finale. Did you did you make any changes uh, because of what happened in those three fights? Obviously you talked about going down uh, to lightweight, but were there any other major changes that you made uh, that have – it made you a better mixed martial artist, or is it simple? You've just been evolving. Uh, yes, I definitely made some serious changes in my career. You know, I quit training with uh, all MMA fighters and went and studied each art uh, by the best I could find in each in each art. I went to go train with Nathaniel Mongonia and Samuel Mongonia and Woody Figaro, the Muay Thai champions over here at Revolution Dojo. I went to go train with champion jiu-jitsu players, uh, Julian Gracie, my master, uh, Professor Homolo, uh, over here in Houston. And I started doing gi for the first time with him. I mean, yeah, so I really started really focusing on each art and becoming great at each one, so that way I can put it in my game. My game stayed the same. My game is awesome. I believe my game, my fight style, beats everyone's fight style when I can implement it, when I can pull the trigger and do what I need to do. But in order for me to do that, I have to be able to kick and punch as best as I can and and be extremely good on the ground. So, yeah, I made some big changes, changed my diet up as well, and uh, you know, cut off all the dead weight in my life, women, friends, everything and uh just started focusing on becoming the best that i could be and that's uh that speaks for itself here i am you mentioned about you know sometimes maybe not pulling the trigger i mean is there anything why you can point to in a fight why maybe you weren't able to do that i mean is it something that is just simply you've been working yeah. on in the gym no no i mean when i say pulling the trigger maybe i couldn't pull the trigger because i wasn't in shape to punch and kick I wasn't in the the right form, form uh, conditioning wise, or I didn't have the knowledge uh, in some 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 areas for the ground or this or that to make certain things happen. I couldn't pull the trigger because there was nothing to pull, you know. So I had to reinvent myself, so to speak, and go back to the drawing board and start all over again, and, and basically sticking to the basics, you know, stand up and ground and just getting better at each one of those things. So now when I'm when I'm in there, I, there will be no excuse. Can I punch and kick? Yeah, all day. Can I go on the ground? Yep, all day. And uh, I've lots of knowledge now, and uh, more than I've ever had. And I'm just getting better with age. I am evolving through all this. And most people, when they get to be my age, they start going down. But uh, not me. I'm going up fast, and uh, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going up. And I know it's it's very cliche to say you know this this fight is mm-hmm. the biggest fight of my career, but it, it really is for you. And fighting you know yeah. Josh Thompson, oh, yeah. he's he's coming into Bellator yeah. after you know stint Strike Force and, and stint in the UFC. Uh, yeah, you know, when you look at Josh, do you see a different Josh Thompson now than say you saw two years ago, or is he, or do you see the same guy? Look, I see the same guy physically in front of me, but mentally not the same. Um, there's a difference. I know what it's like to lose three big fights in a row, whether the, the judges were wrong or not, which I believe the judges were wrong in the first two losses he had. Um, I thought he won. The last one was, you know, unanimous against Tony, and uh, I think that he lost that fight, <clears throat> Josh. But uh, <clears throat> it's the same Josh. He's awesome. He's a world champion, top ten in the world. Can't take nothing away from this man. He's been there, done that, been watching him for years. But mental, mental's not the same. He's looking for a way out, I believe, and he may not admit it, 
But, uh, you know, he's ready to make movies and whatever else he's doing with his business and clothing line, which is very good. But uh, that's not what I want. I'm more starving than ever. He may be hungry, but I'm starving. There's a difference. And uh, I want this more than ever. You know, I don't care about no company. I don't care about clothing line or any other business or this or that. I care about winning. I care about becoming the world champion. And I'm going to do that. And I sacrifice everything in my life, every area, every person, everything to make this happen. And that's why it's going to happen. Because that's how much I want it. In, in terms of the fight, where does patience rank up there and keys to victory for you in this one? Uh, I just got to play my game. Keys to victory is just doing what I do making sure I show up in shape in the best shape of my life. And the rest is going to rest is just going to fall into place. You know, I'm going to win. And, uh, in order for me to do that, I have to be in the best shape of my life. So I can impose my will, uh, patience. You can throw that out the window. We're not going to be patient at all in this fight. <clears throat> it's pedal to the metal, hundred thousand miles an hour straight up. Right when we get into the bell till the fight's over till my hands raised. Obviously, you enter Bellator being a champion of, of legacy. How close do you think you are to potentially being you know, right there in the mix? Do you feel like a, a win on, on Saturday night is going to get you right in the mix for a title shot? Yeah, I don't see why me beating Josh Thompson wouldn't set me up for a title shot. But, uh, you know, we'll just have to see what happens after this fight, what they want to do with me. Uh, they're probably not going to know what to do with me after this fight. But, uh I'm definitely going to create some controversy with this win, and uh, they're definitely going to have to think about it, you know, because, you know, um, I'm sure if Josh, you know, Josh, you know, were to win, uh, he'd be in line for a title shot, being as highly ranked as he is. So I don't see why me beating him would be any different, you know. I don't see who else would be ranked higher than him other than the champion, and that would be the only fight that would make sense, me getting through Josh to fight for the championship of Bellator. So we'll just have to see what happens and what they want to do, you know. You know, obviously this card's got the, the one-night light heavyweight tournament. If they wanted to do that at lightweight, would that be something that would interest you, doing a one-night tournament? Yeah, I've always been a big fan of doing a tournament. I'm made for that stuff. I am so made for that. Like, that's right up my alley. I would love to show how hardcore I am. You know, I would definitely win that. You know, um, I never thought it was fair when they have like an alternate come in, I know why they have to do that, but like an alternate coming in, it's fresh. I haven't fought yet. That's kind of weird, you know? So I've never been a big fan of that, but uh tournament format. Yeah. That sounds really cool. Uh, final thing here. And I appreciate you coming on the show here as just a couple of days out from your fight here. Do you almost look at coming back to Bellator as unfinished business for you? Definitely. It's unfinished business, even though it's got new president, new matchmaker, which has made it so much better than what it was. Uh, it's definitely unfinished business for me because I'm going to come back and uh, become the champion. That's what I'm here for. I didn't come back just to be some guy on the card. You know, it's not why I'm here. Uh, I'm here to be the champion of the world and take over and pump Bellator up. As much as they're pumping this show up, I'm going to do my part to pump uh, my name up in Mobilator and make fans love it even more. They're going to be like, wow, you see the Greek? Oh, my God, that guy's amazing. I want people to jump out of their seats like it's a scary movie. Like, holy shit, got to watch the next episode of that. That's what I want. And, of course, this will be going down on Saturday. Mike, I really appreciate time and good luck in the fight, man. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Have a great day.